So you've worked with vectors and you've worked with free body diagrams and identifying forces. So now it's just time to merge the two concepts and it's relatively easy to do when you break it out into component form. And by that I mean you look just in the x-direction on the x-axis and then you look just in the y-direction and the y-axis. So a similar situation, uh, you may remember this. Free body diagram, we would make a point particle at a center of mass and it would have tension in the rope holding it up and it would have the counteracting force of gravity pulling it down. So these are the only two forces, there's nothing on the x-axis. And so when we sum up, and this uh, fancy symbol here just means you add up all the forces on the y-axis, and well, there are no forces, or sorry, on the x-axis, there are no forces on the x-axis, so we're done. But now we need to look at the forces on the y-axis, and we do have two forces on the y-axis. We have a positive tension pointing up on the y-axis is positive, and we have a negative pointing down on the y-axis force of gravity. And in Newton's second law, if it's stationary, so we're at static equilibrium, then there is no ma, it's just equal to zero. So we can add force of gravity to both sides now, and the tension in the rope will be equal to the force of gravity pulling down. And we know that the force of gravity is the same as saying the mass times gravitational acceleration of Earth. And g, of course, is 9.8 meters per, per second squared. So 10 kilograms, 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So force of gravity is going to be 98 newtons. So the tension equals the force of gravity, which equals 98 newtons. So we have a similar example here. I just want to get you used to the not notation, except now we have an acceleration upwards on the y-axis. So same thing. We have the tension up, we have a counteracting force of gravity down. There is nothing happening on the x-axis, so it's just equal to zero again. There's no forces on the x-axis here. But we do have, same as last time, tension positive since it's going up, minus the force of gravity since it's going down. And now, uh, here it was equal to zero, but now it's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. And our acceleration is positive because it's going up on the y-axis. If acceleration was going down, we would have a negative acceleration on this side. But so now, we uh, have identified forces on the x-axis and the y-axis, and we could uh, go through, say it's the same tension as the last example, so say you want to figure out acceleration, it would be, we would just divide both sides by the mass. So acceleration would be tension minus force of gravity divided by the mass. So say it's the same tension as the past example, that'd be 98 newtons minus force of gravity uh, Oh, I, got, I see what I did here, but yeah. So it wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to use the same tension uh, as a past example, because that would just give us uh, zero. But uh, say we had 100, so just, just to run through, get used to the units. So 100 minus 98 divided by 10 kilograms. So acceleration would be 2 over 10 or one-fifth meters per second squared. Okay. Now, uh, we have another example here. And let's do our free body diagram. We have a force pulling to the right. And we have, it's not moving. 
So we have a counteracting, and these are the same magnitude, a counteracting vector, uh, which is going to be the force of static friction holding it in place. That's an S there, hopefully you can see it. Static friction. Uh, so that's for the x-axis, and then for the y-axis we have the normal force, very common force. Uh, it needs to counteract gravity, and of course we have gravity pulling down. So some of the forces on the x-axis, well we have a positive going to the right on the x-axis, x, y, a positive force minus the force of static friction, and it's not moving, so equal to zero. And in the y-axis we have a normal force pointing up and a force of gravity pointing down. And again it's not moving, so it's going to be equal to zero. And that means that the normal force is going to equal force of gravity, which uh, mg, so mass 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, so it's 98 newtons. Okay, so all this is just practice to lead up to our master problem. So this is something you might actually see on a test.